why people are worried or anxious about the economy. It's clear we've gone through an enormous roller coaster in monetary policy. We, we had this huge increase in the money supply after the pandemic hit, and, and then that was followed by a, a huge increase in inflation. Then the Fed switches into reverse, and we've had this huge contraction in the money supply, and we have coming slowdown in inflation. In recent years, Americans have lamented the pandemic-related price rise across a wide range of goods and services, leaving many voters in 2024 questioning whether relief is on the horizon. Since the post-COVID-19 period, supply-side factors have significantly influenced inflation in the U.S. economy. While inflation has shown signs of cooling, Federal Reserve officials warn that the ultimate goal has not yet been achieved. Money market projections suggest a likely 25 basis point rate cut next month, with a 72% probability of an additional cut in December. Regarding broader economic concerns, Steve Hankey, professor of applied economics at Johns Hopkins University, notes that many individuals are anxious about the economy due to recent fluctuations in monetary policy. He highlights widespread apprehensions about excessive government spending, large deficits, and rising national debt, all adding to public unease about the economic future. Additionally, Professor Hankey shares his perspective on the upcoming U.S. election. With less than two weeks until the election, the CNBC All-America Economic Survey indicates that the presidential race remains a statistical tie nationally and in key battleground states, consistent with the August survey. Nationally, former President Donald Trump has a slight edge over Vice President Kamala Harris, leading 48% to 46%, which is within the poll's 3.1% margin of error. In the seven battleground states, Trump also leads slightly with 48% to Harris's 47%, staying within a 4% margin of error for that segment. Although these numbers may be subjective, the betting markets offer a more objective viewpoint. Steve Hankey believes that Trump's momentum is substantial, as he has made significant gains in overall polling and swing states. As we dive into the video, remember to subscribe and tap the bell icon so you never miss an update. We value your thoughts, so drop a comment below and give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the content. First of all, let's talk about the election uh, prospects br briefly. If you look at what's happened in the last month, month and a half, and, and you look at the polling numbers, gradually Trump's come from clearly behind to even or may, maybe a, 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 a tad ahead. Now, those are subjective. The polling markets are... Well, if, if you look objectively at what's going on in the betting markets where people have skin in the game uh, and, and you get an objective market indication of the probability of winning, Trump has come from behind to uh, a considerable lead uh, overall and, and in these swing states. So it appears that there's quite a bit of momentum behind Trump. So at this at this stage, that's that's what that's what it's looking like. Uh, I I tend to look at the betting markets, the so-called prediction markets, because they are objective and reliable and more accurate than the polling data. And the reason for that is, of course, people are betting real money when they're engaged in those markets. It's a little bit like the stock market. You know, the stock market. We got all kinds of analysts who have subjective ideas about what the value of a, a company should be or a stock. And there are thousands of them. But what happens with the market, it, it accumulates all that subjective information and like a magnet, sucks it in, sucks it in. And, and you have buyers and sellers then who actually want to engage with their own money in either buying or selling. And what you end up with is the market price. And the market price is, is the price. It's objective. It's no longer subjective. It's, it's the aggregation of all those subjective values and valuations into one objective number. And that's what goes on in the betting markets. It, it sucks in all these subjective views about Harris or Trump, and you end up with a with a probability. And so that's that's why I tend to look at those now. Why people are worried or anxious about the economy? It's clear we've gone through an enormous roller coaster in monetary policy. We we had this huge increase in the money supply after the pandemic hit, and and then that was followed by a, a huge increase in inflation. Then the Fed switches into reverse, and we've had this huge 
contraction in the money supply, and we have coming slowdown in inflation. So inflation goes, money supply goes way up, inflation goes way up. Now the money supply comes down and inflation starts going way down. And I think people are worried, at least I am, I think we'll have a recession because of this contraction in the money supply. So so that roller coaster ride effect of, of the money and monetary policy is one factor. The, the other factor, I think people intuitively are they're, they're worried about this free spending in Washington. Gover- expansion of government, government deficits, hu- huge deficits, a huge accumulation of debt. In its recent fiscal monitor published on Wednesday, the International Monetary Fund introduced a new strategy known as the Debt at Risk Framework to tackle concerns surrounding the significantly high levels of global public debt, which is projected to keep increasing. According to the IMF, global public debt is anticipated to reach $100 trillion in 2024, representing 93% of global GDP. It is expected to continue rising throughout the decade, nearing 100% of GDP by 2030. Hankey contends that although the IMF criticizes deficits and debt, its standard solution is to raise taxes. This approach often results in tax increases for countries participating in IMF programs, which can impede economic growth. He further notes that the current growth rate of the money supply stands at just 2%, while inflation rates are at 2.4%, suggesting a possible economic slowdown. Hankey anticipates that, as a result of this contraction in the money supply, inflation is likely to decline over the coming year. Now, let's redirect our attention to a video. The only problem I have with the IMF, you note his solution is more taxes. Mine is less government spending. In other words, the the IMF, they, they don't like the deficits, they don't like the debt, but their solution is always to increase taxes. And and that's why every country that goes into an IMF program starts, starts running into this tax increase thing and actually growth slows down because all the IMF programs are, are, are simply fueling a growth in government by increases, increased taxes, or you end up with tax revolts like we recently had in Kenya. You know, Ken- Kenya had a, a huge tax revolt over the summer because the IMF said as a condition for IMF money coming into Kenya, they had to increase taxes. Right. So the government says, oh yeah, that's a great idea. Well, the public didn't like that very much and they ended up with, you had riots in the street. If the Fed monetized the debt and the Fed is one buying the treasury bonds that are issued to finance the debt. If the Fed buys it, that increases the money supply. It's monetized then and that will increase inflation. If not, if the Fed doesn't buy it, the money supply doesn't increase because they they sell the bonds to to Steve Hankey and David Lynn and what happens? We pay for it with a check and that reduces our checking account and that reduces the money supply. It doesn't increase. So it depends on what, 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 what is happening to the financing of the debt and who's buying it. If the Fed is buying it, it's inflationary. If the Fed is not buying it, it's not inflationary. It actually could be, if the Fed doesn't offset the reduction in those checking accounts that you and I have made when we bought the debt, if the Fed doesn't do anything, it's actually deflationary. The growth rate in the money supply now is 2%, and Hankey's golden growth rate consists with hitting a 2% inflation target is 6%. So the monetary growth is very, very slow. The stock of money is lower than it was in July of 2020. Inflation is at 2.4%. It's coming down. I think next next year, it's going to be below, the, end up coming down below the target. I mean, it, it could very well by the sometime next year be down, to, you know, one and a half percent headline inflation. So no, and in, in the near term, I'm not worried about it. Now, why am I not worried about it? Because I know what's happened to the growth rate in the money supply a year ago, two years ago. It's coming down. So I'm not worried about it because you always have to look at what's happened to the money supply in prior months and prior years to anticipate what's going to happen in the future with the real economy and inflation. And I think due to this contraction in the money supply, we're going to have a slowdown in the economy. That's the real sector and will continue to get a slowdown in inflation. Despite a significant drop in the officially measured inflation rate, a CNBC survey reveals that many Americans remain skeptical about their economic situation. 
Approximately 75% of respondents believe prices are still rising, with 45% indicating that these increases are occurring at a faster pace than before. However, there is a glimmer of optimism, as 37% of the public thinks the economy will improve in the next year, the highest level of confidence seen in over three years. This uptick in optimism may be more closely related to perceptions of the upcoming election rather than an actual assessment of economic conditions. How much do you believe the upcoming election impacts public perception of the economy? Are voters' feelings about the economy tied more to political candidates than economic data? We value your thoughts, so feel free to share them in the comments. If you found this content valuable, please give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to stay informed. Thank you for being part of this journey with us.